right, good morning students. Uh, so for today's floor plan, as you can see uh, uh, on page 5.2, so 5.1 is obviously the diagram sheet and they tell you to add doors and windows, all the fixtures, that's our cupboards and things, all hatching detail and label the room designations with the respective floor finishes and determine and label the area of each room and also determine the area. So very, very important there. So if you want to follow the rest of the diagram, here you can clearly see here is the incomplete floor plan there you can see some floor units or built-in cupboards there there's an opening there's a door one multiple ones of those there's some sliding doors two of them and then here's window one window two now on the windows when you go to the diagram at the top left here you can see the schedule for all the doors and window fixtures now the main di uh, uh, dimensions that you want to see here is for example here for window one that length is 2.5 meters okay and if you go down you can see that window two has a slightly less long it's only two meters and then the sliding doors of course to fit so they have to fit in the openings that they provide okay then uh, also a very important part of it okay the fixtures you'll see here they give you pictorial views of the fixtures so for example here's a kitchen sink a bath basin uh, shower and a toilet but we do not draw them like this okay if you draw them like this in the exam you will actually get nothing okay you have to draw them symbolically and not pictorially all right so going to the diagram itself you can see this is typically what you'll get in the exam as well you can see there's the openings there's the window twos window one the sliding doors two of them there's another window two and the door leading to the outside okay but again you cannot always assume most of the times it's true but you cannot always assume that these openings are the exact same size as the windows um, today on this one it does but it doesn't always happen so don't assume anything All right then if we go and start with the basics the fittings now you can see with the kitchen sink remember that if I go to the kitchen sink here we don't really need the front view here we're mostly going to work with this top view and of course in that 950 so all the measurements that you see here on the screen everything you divide by 50 or the scale the reason being is that the scale of the drawing is given as 1 to 50 so all those measurements you divide by 50 so 500 becomes 10 and so on okay all right so if we go there and we draw it symbolically, you start with the outline, which is the same as the size given. And then that width there, please make sure that when you go there, they give it to you as 350. Okay, so it becomes 7 on the floor plan. And then to finish off the kitchen sink, you just add a small dot there, and then that symbol is done. Then if we go to the bathroom, we'll have most of the fixtures. Here you can see the basin. Now again, on the diagram, you can see that they actually give you the codes. Okay, so for example, here is S for sink. Okay, SH for shower. Tell you where you must place those things. So you can't just put them anywhere. Okay. Then here is a WC or toilet. Now please take notes when you do a toilet. Um, you have to keep it rectangular. Remember that all these distances have sizes that they give you at the schedule. So the WC here, this label has to be given. Otherwise, you don't get the full mark here. So the WC water closet. So the actual part of the back of the toilet is the water closet. And you have to label that as well. Then here you can see they don't actually ask you to put built-in cupboards. Now, if we compare these two these are both floor units okay cupboards but this is like a kitchen counter okay with cupboards below and while it is built into the wall it doesn't go up to the ceiling because obviously here might be a microwave or a kettle and other things okay the difference between these two is that when you see a cupboard with an x on it it means it goes up to the ceiling okay so you could probably have some uh upper cupboards that uh is built in there as well they don't actually ask you to add these but I thought just as an example uh, I wanted to show you a few and here's another one that I added okay. and then last but not least of course is the bath very simple it's just the right size with a dot okay once you've drawn this once you'll be able to draw it every single time you can do one floor plan you can do a hundred typically students do very well in this in the exam 
So next we are going to look at the windows. Now again, we don't always know have all the information for windows. Is it a metal frame, wooden frame, how thick is it? We simply don't have that and you don't need to have it. The builder wants to see where the location of the window is and what size it will be. Okay, so when you draw the symbol, you have to basically take the wall and have about a third of the width and draw a double line across and that will represent the frame of the window. And then the saw has to stick over the wall just a tiny bit. This can be as little as one millimeter. Don't go overboard with it. It must not be level with the wall, but it must not be absurd. So this is the sill sticking over and just a small amount. Again, we don't know what type of sill it is. Is it a ceramic sill? Is it brick? We don't know. So again, if it just goes over by one millimeter, that's enough. And if you can draw one window, you can do a million of them. If we go to the doors, now normally if we remove the door first you'll see that in the exam they give you this little hinge opening so obviously the hinge is not going to lie to swing the door the other way it has to swing this way okay because these rebates are going to the door is going to fit in between these two rebates on each side so when you draw the door you start by simply saying okay you take the distance from there to there and you go on this corner and you add the length you give it a little bit of thickness again there's no rule on it one millimeter is enough and then you complete the door then you put your compass down line it up and you swing it in okay and that's it now once you've got that in place you've done the basics okay um, next you want to go and you want to add the hatching now the hatching should be normally at 45 degrees um, to the left or right doesn't actually matter okay now the hatching has to be in civil a double line then a gap and a double line then a gap then a double line then a gap and so on on the walls because remember this is effectively a sectional top view in order to draw the double line what I normally do is let's say I start on that corner with my 45 degrees and the point of the set square is on the ruler let's say on zero then I draw move to half a centimeter and I draw the first line then I go to one and I draw the next line. Then I skip one and a half or two centimeters, I draw the next one. Then I skip half a centimeter, one and a half, half, one and a half, half, one and a half, half. And you keep doing that and you'll basically have a double line gap, double line gap. Okay, but the gap between the double lines has to be bigger. Okay. Then for the sliding doors, also very easy. Okay. Again, the outside you just draw a solid line all the way through. Okay. But then you need to have a small rebate here. It doesn't matter what it is. I would say normally about a quarter to about a quarter of the width of the wall. But you need to have a small rebate here. Okay? And then you draw another solid line. And then you draw a double line in between. And then you connect a line from the inside to where the door frame actually stops. And that will be the symbol for the sliding door. But each room, now I'm only going to show one example because you can go to your memo book, you can calculate them yourself, it's normally not that difficult. If you are asked to calculate the area of a room, you have to measure the distance between the inside of the walls. Okay, so we don't include things like little passages, we only take the inside of the walls as the room. So the length there I calculated as 112. Now, in the exam, you might measure that and it might be 113. Another student might get 111. The problem is, I drew this out in CAD and it turns out it's not 112, it's 111,8. Okay, and the 62 or the width in between the northern and southern inside wall is actually not 62, it's like 61,6. Which means there's an allowance in the exam, a very small allowance each way. Because if you have let's say here uh, if I zoom in 112 um, and the other one you've got 61 you're not going to get the same answer so that's why in the exam you don't have to stress about it too much okay because a ruler is not accurate okay so you get some allowance for the final answer okay but just make sure that the values that you have there must match up with what you have here as well okay so step one you measure the two the length and width then you multiply it by 50 or the scale, whatever the scale is. If the scale was 20, you would multiply it by 20. Okay? 
Then to convert it to meters, and you have to convert it to meters, you divide it by a thousand, and then you will have it. So it's 5,6. This is converted to 5,6, and that's 62. When I multiply by 50, divide by 1,000, uh, it's 3,1, and I got 17.36 square meters. And you have to write the unit, otherwise you get nothing. Okay. Then also every single room must have the following two things. You have to label the room, let's say lounge, kitchen, bedroom one, whatever it might be. And then you have to indicate the floor covering, which is normally given to you anyway. Okay. If the floor coverings are not given, as a standard, kitchen has tiles, bedrooms have carpet. Okay. Each room, you can imagine if you get two or three marks for the area, plus a mark for the floor covering, plus a mark for the label, it adds up. Okay, so if you have five or six rooms, that's a lot of marks that you're going to lose if you don't do it. And, and this is the one area where students tend to lose marks because they're too lazy to do it. Okay, there's no point doing that entire drawing and then you throw 20 or 30 marks away because you don't want to do that. Well, practice will do you some good. And then last but not least, I know it's most, most of the times it's given. But if you ever have to draw the north indicator, this is the only way you're supposed to draw it according to the SANS code. The size can vary, but it has to be a circle with a cross inside, and then you connect two other points to the apex, and that will give you the north indicator. If there's no other way to draw that, please always do it this way.